Thank you for tuning into my channel. My name is Josh. And this video is going to show you how to install TransGinger on your Samsung Transform. I'm going to show you how to completely stop phone by holding down volume down, voice, and power. And we won't let go until we see something this time. What the hell? There we go, I have completely stock Android 2.1 on here right now. Go ahead and let it boot up and show you. Alright, you'll see Android 2.1 and it's going to force me to install an ID before I can do anything. But I'm going to go ahead and power it down. And then reboot into that recovery. Or not. I can't seem to get the timing down just right. I don't use stock recovery on here. Okay, so if you keep holding it, it just keeps rebooting like that. There we go. Volume down. Apply zip from SD card. It has to be just named update.zip. It can't have anything other than update in the title. This is going to install Android 2.2.2 EB28 because you cannot use a one-click root method on EF09. If you have EF09, you have to use software upgrade and flash a recovery that way. Okay, so now it's rebooting to Android 2.2.2 EB28. You can tell by the new sound. Alright, so now you'll notice that it's not going to make its install an ID. And it did this right after booting. It's just making sure there's no updates available. Which the EF09 update was only available for a short time and they pulled it and they have not released it since then. I'm not a big EF09 person myself. Turn down the white balance and it looks like that. Sweet. There you go, I'm completely stock. Now I have to install an app that roots the phone. This one right here, this will root the phone. If you have EB28, if you have EF09, you're just wasting your time. This is not gonna work, that was patched. You can root, but you have to use software upgrade if you have EF09. If you have EB28, you're in luck, you can use this method. Choose the top one, it says permanent root and just let it do its thing. It just vibrated twice, and it rebooted. So we should be rooted, we'll find out. Okay, I gotta turn on Wi-Fi, sign in my Google account, and download the recovery.rfs, or the zip that contains Clockwork Mod, because you won't get much further without Clockwork Mod Recovery, and I forgot to include that on the SD card. I'll be back. Okay, so different change of plans. I'm gonna see if I can find it using just the web browser. That's great. In the search results, my video came up. So I'm going to go ahead and try to find the link in here. Click on this one that goes to ifile.it. I think they make you log in now to download stuff, which is really freaking stupid. And it says my file's been removed, so apparently I need to re-upload it. Okay, I'm going to go transfer the recovery.rfs file to the SD card. And I'll include a link to Dropbox, so it instantly downloads to your SD card, and you don't have to go through this process. I'll be back. All right, I've done two things since I stopped recording. I transferred the Clockwork Mod Transform Zip to the SD card, and I also extracted the recovery.rfs to show you that you could do it both ways. Now that we're rooted with intercept root, we do not have super user because it doesn't install it that way. I need to install this flash image UI app. Awesome, there's no errors, so we should have root access. We'll be flashing recovery, so you can check that one. Browse. And I have it on the root directory. As you can see, I have cwm underscore transform.zip and recovery.rfs. You can actually choose either one of those. This is just the recovery, and this is the one that you could flash if you have like vampire foes recovery. Now, even if you choose the zip, it'll extract the recovery.rfs file out of this zip. So you can do it either way. You can have the clockwork mod zip that you would flash with vampire foes recovery, and it'll automatically pull the recovery.rfs out of that for you, or you can just transfer the raw recovery.rfs file. Either way, whichever is easier for you. And we're gonna flash it. And then choose yes. Awesome, it has successfully flashed recovery. Now I'm going to go ahead and reboot this thing into recovery by powering it down. 
and then hold down volume down, voice and power. And then let go once you see Samsung. Yay, now we have Root and we have Custom Recovery without using a computer if you have VB28. Now, with the stock kernel that you have on there now, you have to keep it RFS. If you convert it to EXT4, it will not run unless you use a kernel like Vampire Foes 2.10 low voltage kernel. Then you can flash that while you're in here, reboot, and then go back to EXT4. Then you go to Mountain Storage and format everything as EXT4. And press home. And do that repetitively with all of them except the SD card. Okay, so everything but the SD card and SD EXT, which I've never used, is flash as EXT4. So I press back and then choose installs it from SD card, choose it from SD card, and find the trans ginger on crack 1.3. The one below the one I'm about to choose is the one that gets rid of carrier IQ. You should press the camera. Oh, my bad. That's the one that does it right there. Choose it again. And choose that one right there instead. There we go. That's the actual ROM. And press home. And then this is going to take a minute. It's done. So we're going to go ahead and just press back. And then choose leave recovery and reboot the system. I want you to understand that this is going to take a while. And you get an awesome cool new boot logo. Which if you want to change that, you can use Flash Image GUI. But be very, very careful because if you flash one that's too big, you will permanent break your phone. And you voided your warranty by rooting, so you're going to have to pay full price for a new one. Unless you're dishonest and you try to get a replacement, which some people have done. I'm not recommending it, but it's possible. I'm going to recommend you having a full battery. What do you want? Nothing much. Oh, working on my video, but it's taking a long time. <laughs> What are you up to? How was church? Okay, obviously the battery on my Canon 60D is going to die. And this is taking a very long time. So I'm not sure what's going on. I'm going to go ahead and leave it here. It's currently 2.02 p.m. Central Time. I'm going to stop recording, charge the battery, and try to figure out why this isn't rooting. It took so long that the battery on my camera died. <laughs> So I just finished up editing to the very end of the last part that you just saw a short conversation I had with my stepdad now that my battery's charged I can go ahead and continue this video. I had a lot of fun with this. I really did I'm gonna show you first of all reboot into recovery I tried factory resetting formatting the ext4 over and over and over again re-downloading the zip I tried everything and it wouldn't get past this little part right here. So what I did was I went to mountain storage I formatted the cache and then I went to install zip from SD card, choose zip from SD card, and I applied Vampire Foes 2.10 low voltage kernel. And then I left recovery and rebooted the system. I'm gonna tell you that I've been messing with Android since 2009, so I want to feel like I know what I'm doing, and it made sense to me. I had a completely stock 2.1 Android ROM on there. I applied the 2.2.2 EB28, I rooted, and then converted to EXT4. The stock kernel does not support EXT4, so you wouldn't get past that. But the stock kernel does not support EXT4. So I got to thinking, and I troubleshooted on my own. I did like I said and I installed the Vampire Foe low voltage kernel and bam, this is exactly what happened right after that. So I got stuck at that bootloader loading bar that a lot of people say they get stuck at and I beat it by formatting the cache, installing the low voltage 2.10 kernel by Vampire Foe and rebooting the system. Now this is already a pretty long video so I really don't have time to go through all the benefits of this ROM. I don't have service on this phone but I'm going to go ahead and still play with it anyway and I'll try to make a review but I can't promise anything. Quickly I'm just going to go ahead and go to menu settings and you'll see that it has some of the cool transitions like we saw back when uh, there was UD6 ROM for this thing about phone. I do like the transitions are pretty freaking awesome. Where's my damn cleaning cloth? <laughs> it's in my pocket. Such an idiot. I do like that a lot. Maybe you can read that, maybe you can't. I'm pretty sure you can. Again, it's just so cool. You get the TouchWiz launcher. I'm not a big fan of TouchWiz. But you can install IDW Launcher and it would get rid of that. Comes with an SDX stock app remover. So instead of going into recovery or using a root explorer app, you can delete the files or back them up. If you want to use the super user app, you can just type those commands inside Terminal Emulator or ConnectBot, which I do personally prefer to use super user because it gives you control of what apps get root and which don't. There you go, I'll go ahead and include this in the video too. The neat little keyboard. I just can't get over these transitions, they're sick. 
But anyways, this is what would Josh do. This has been my video on how to install Transgingeron Crack on the Samsung Transform. If you like this video, please be sure to click the like button by giving this video a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos on the Samsung Transform, please be sure to subscribe to me. This is what would Josh do, and I'm...